And this particular console is directly connected Ow! to my foot. Ow! 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 Hello YouTube, this is a demonstration of a completely clean console verification of the game Super Mario Bros. 1. This is my original console from when I was a kid. I've got a copy of Super Mario Bros. inside of it. I am kind of afraid to take this out to show it to you because you never know when you might need to blow on the cartridge when you're done. But this is an original copy of Super Mario Bros. in an unmodified Nintendo console. Alright, we got lucky. So, I'm just going to quickly, as fast as I can, complete the first level, and I'm not going to be as fast as some people are. I'm just not as OC like there. But I did I did clip, though. I mean, I did get the, the nice clip there. But I'm just going to quickly demonstrate that this is completely unmodified and that I am a bad speedrunner. I am not the perfect... Whoopsie! I got a time of, two, of 361. That's not too bad. So, I'm going to unplug my controller cable here in a second, but before I move on to the next step. I want to show you my video path. This is going directly into this professional video monitor you see back here. And coming out the video monitor is the output to my capture device. So what I see on this screen and what you will see on this screen is identical to what is being captured by the capture device. Now, up here on this cart, I have TaskBot. And TaskBot is holding what we call a replay device. It perfectly behaves exactly like a normal controller, like the controller I just unplugged. So we're going to take that cable and plug it into the front of this Nintendo, which actually caused it to pause when I did it, which is not an uncommon reaction. Now, TaskBot has a device, this little guy right here, that'll show you what buttons he's pressing. Now, Maru, if Maru is still around, Maru is here in chat and can provide a copy of a movie file, is what we call it, a, an input file, a series of button presses for us. So if he is here, yeah, thank you, Maru. Maru has provided this, this link you see right here. You see flashing in the lower corner of the screen. So I'm going to copy that link. I'm going to paste it in here. And we're going to get that file. Perfect. So we've downloaded Maru RTA rules button presses. Now, this is RTA rules, meaning it's never going to, at any point, press buttons that it should not press. In other words, it'll never press left and right at the same time, or anything funny like that. We're going to use this script and point it at the, at the device that TaskBot is holding. So we're going to make a new run. We're going to point it at, at Maru's file that we just downloaded. There's only one controller needed for this run. It's a normal run, doesn't have anything strange going on. An original Nintendo has eight buttons on it. And in this particular case, we don't need any unusual things to correct for DPCM audio. So all three, all of these window options are unneeded. This particular console seems to like uh, two and sometimes even three blank frames at the beginning. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to hide this console here, that terminal. I'm going to reset the script, and this is basically going to, if we get it right, it'll start playing the game. If we're, if we're lucky, everything will line up perfectly the first time, but it has not been... Hey, there we go. It hasn't been cooperative earlier today. So this is a console verification on completely unmodified hardware of a run made by Maru. He provided me, through that link you saw earlier, a copy of a file that is nothing more and nothing less than a series of button presses. And... As you can see, TaskBot, this bot up here, is not pressing any buttons right now because we're in this section where nothing's happening. Right here, we're going to, as soon as we start this level, you'll see these buttons start to be pressed. So you can see he's pressing right and the run button, in this case, uh, B. And everything you see here is achievable as a human. If a human were pressing all the right buttons at all the right time, the game would behave exactly the way you see it behaving. Right up here, you're going to see us glitch into this pipe. Maru clipped into that pipe, went far enough to the right to load World 4, because he didn't want to accidentally trigger level 1, or uh, the warp to the negative world, negative 1 world. Um, everything you just saw 
is behaving exactly the way that the original game authors wrote the game to behave. They didn't necessarily realize it at the time, but when they wrote the code for this game, they added in features so that it behaves exactly the way you saw. Now, the only thing that's different between a human playing this game and Taskbot playing this game is that Taskbot is very consistent in what buttons he's able to press in order. He's not doing anything that a human cannot do. He's simply doing something with great reproducibility. And I want to pause for a second and talk about something interesting, player pianos. Back in the 1900s, you could go to a roll store. It was a store where you could buy scrolls of music designed for player pianos. And you could take that home and play it back in a player piano at home. By the way, just though you just saw a wrong warp, that's also something that's in the original game. If you are quick, you can, you can press down before it scrolls the vine off the screen. And so when you go down the pipe, you trigger the vine. Very common speedrun technique that human run runners use, and Mario employed that there as well. So back to the player piano question, uh, example. You could take this scroll home, put it in your player piano at home, and play that strip of paper with holes in it that would identify what notes to play through your player piano, and you would hear music being played. That's basically what we've done here. Mario provided me with a file we call an R08 file, but it's just nothing more and nothing less than a series of buttons to press in order, one after another, from the beginning of this game to the end. And I took it to my home, as you can see, and played it back on my childhood NES, and in order, every single button is being pressed and the game is being beaten, as we'd expect. There's one thing I want to note about those piano rolls. You could have a human sit down at a reproducing piano and play through a piece of music as best they could, record that music, and then sell that roll. Or you could compose the music by hand by punching holes in the paper, making it the exact same way as the original composer's arrangement. And that's a pretty close example of what a tool-assisted speedrun was, just predating us by about 100 years. Now, something interesting. A human only has 10 fingers, but these original composers and arrangers discovered pretty quickly that a piano has more than 10 fingers, or 10 buttons, 10 keys. It actually has 88 keys, and you can play more than 10 of them at the same time. So it wasn't uncommon for music designed specifically for a piano roll, in other words, a player piano that was not designed for a human to play, to have a little bit extra punch by using more notes than a human could ever possibly play. And that's kind of what you're seeing on display here. A normal human would never try to do what you just saw. It would be too risky. A normal human being sitting at a normal piano, likewise, couldn't play some of those original compositions. It would be too hard. But I use that example because I want to show that there is nothing at all unmodified with this Nintendo. In the same way that, um, how do I say this? I guess the best way to phrase it is what you're seeing and what you're experiencing is completely possible by the rules of the hardware that, that Nintendo released. This console, this game, it's all working exactly the way it was programmed, exactly the way the hardware was designed to. The only thing that's unusual here is that we're using a series of button presses sent by a robot. And Taskbot, up here, is sending exactly the same electrical signals that a normal controller would send down to limitations on not being able to press left and right at the same time. We've just beat Bowser, and I've already forgotten the total time it took. I believe it was just under four minutes, or just under five minutes. Um, Mar Mario can confirm exactly the finishing time there. But what I want to bring up here is I at no point in time reverse engineered anything when I showed you this. I didn't use an emulator. I didn't do anything unusual that should cause any trouble whatsoever. And I would like to put this on YouTube without any content ID match issues or concerns. I believe I've demonstrated here that everything we've done is completely legitimate and above board, and I'd like to think that Nintendo's lawyers would agree. Thank you so much for watching this, and have a great day.